Who am I here with today? <laughs> uh, Hayden Grant. Hayden Grant. Yes. What's up with you? How do I know you? What, what, where are you from? So I'm from here. Okay, where's um, here? Dallas. Yeah. But I've been in California the last five years as of from like 2018 to... Did you sell your soul? I kind of did. Yeah. Um, I joined the Marine Corps and they sent me to Camp Pendleton. Yeah. Go Marine Corps. Army sucks. <coughs> Anyways. <laughs> But yeah, I went to Camp Pendleton, which is Southern California, and I was there for four and a half years. And then I decided this grandiose idea to move to L.A. and become a superstar. And after about eight months, I gave up on that because, you know, people get so corrupt out there. Like I lost myself. Yeah. What, What made you give up? Like, what was the thing that set you over and made you move back to Texas? Well, you grew up here and then you yeah, moved there yeah. when? I moved there in March of 2023. So I was there until January. I moved back January 4th oh, of this strong. year. What are you drinking? Whiskey. Mm, I love mm. whiskey. Mm. When we got back from deployment, I would we could down a bottle of Jack Daniels. Easy. Yeah. But anyways, um, I just really realized like everything was so transactional. And I don't mean like transactional as in everybody was fake. Like, I think that's the, the concept that people get from LA is like, oh, everyone's fake. And like, yeah, there's fake people. But really what it is, is transactional. Like everyone is only looking for something that they can give you. And once that thing is exchanged, whether it's sex or money Sign or fame, up. yeah, they're done with you. And I just, I think people here are more genuine yeah. or are the East Coast. Like East Coast people keep it real. So uh, what made you want to join the army? I mean, the, the Marines, sorry. <laughs> um, I think it was family tradition, but honestly, this is going to sound really dumb, but I thought that the Marine Corps would turn me straight. Wow. Yeah, you heard it live. <laughs> I I chose like the, I what I thought was the toughest branch, which I I still think is, and like there's no dig against any other branch, but like just straight up like basic training and like the fundamentals of being marine. I do think it's the most challenging physically yeah. and mentally. Well, infantry, infantry. Yeah. What what was the original job that you had? And also, um, are you a flaming homosexual? Oh, I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's no going <laughs> back from that. Yeah, flaming homosexual. Okay. Um. Just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I so tell. I couldn't tell what the I joined. Top. Is that a crop? Yeah, partial. I mean, it's it's yeah. no. See, I this is this is what men should be wearing. Right. They don't need to wear t-shirts that are should, down. I think should men should cover their their, their uh, biceps, their sleeves. I, I mean, you know. I mean, I do too, but like Depends. I was going for I like could, I could go like this. You should, yeah. Maybe. Why not? We'll do it for the rest. It's of open carry in Texas, don't open you know? Open carry. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. We're yeah. Open so I carry. started. I had a reconnaissance contract. Okay. Um, and made it three weeks before graduation, and got dropped. I think partially it was like because you're. Yeah, I think so. I think people had their suspicions, and I'm not like trying to be like I'm the best guy ever, but I was. Top of my class, one of the top people ruck running. I was a good swimmer. Um, I think I had a little bit of an attitude problem, like only in the fact of I would challenge a lot. I'm like, okay, well, why are we going to do a 20 click movement this way when we could do like a 12 click movement? What is a click? It's a kilometer. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I just wanted to. Yeah. Let um, else know that. So, and I broke my foot. So, like, I was in the it's basic reconnaissance course. I broke my foot in first phase and then I got recycled to the next class and then went blah, through. blah, blah. All right. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just wanted to be a little, no, bit. it's kind I of boring. To be a little bit. Of it's a kind bitch. of boring. No, it's okay. You're I, an icon. No, it's okay. You're an icon. Icon living. Icon. Can you say that again? Icon. You're a con. Con. Okay. All right. Um, no. All right. So, um, how did we meet? It's actually a really interesting story. Yeah. Um, I'll let you explain part of it. I, I mean, we met on Instagram, but yeah. I met a friend chase. Yeah. I don't, should I say his name? Chase who? Uh, you don't have to say his full name. Okay. Anyways, yeah. I had a friend in LA that I met and I saw that you were following him on Instagram and I feel oh, like I was oh, trying Chase to Parker. get, Chase yeah, Parker. Yeah, Chase yes. Parker. I collabed with him and then his boyfriend. I did not have sex with him and his boyfriend. Yeah. But I, I saw that he was following you or that you were following him and I was like, okay, this probably is like my best, like yeah. social networking, right? Like this is my best opportunity. Yeah. And I thought that we would do great on a podcast together so the we'll funny, we'll well, but the funny story <laughs> is that is that I DM'd him like, hey, can you reach out to Michael and like get us in contact? I a lot but I podcasts, also right? emailed you, and it th- like that is the craziest story that in the same day that I reached out to Chase and I he happened sent to you, check my emails you happened to check your email before I even read his message. because Chase messaged me and he's like, blah blah blah, like yeah, I'll send him a text message, 
And then you sent me a DM and I was like, wow, that was fucking quick. Yeah. And then turns out that you didn't even see the yeah, message. Yeah, no, I just Chase. wanted to see the yeah. email. But so we, we messaged each other and we found out. He's like, oh, I live in yeah. Dallas. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, really. I'm like, oh, I'm in Arlington. <laughs> Arlington. And then but I'm not going to go any deeper than that. Yeah. Then he yeah. was like, oh, I live here. I'm like, no way. Like, I'm in the same community. That's so yeah. funny. So, yeah. yeah. And then we literally like we, we're like we texted neighbors. this. We texted this like in the same night. Yeah. And, and then I came out. over. Yeah, yeah, we hung out. Yeah. yeah. And we're not the nasty gays, all right, no. guys. We're not just whores, okay? No, we're we the, actually we're had. The gay, we're respectable <laughs> gays. I was hesitant about that too. If I'm I being was honest. also like I, 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 was I knew hesitant. that, like, not that I think I, I said like as, <laughs> I think I messaged that. But I also don't think like I wasn't coming on to no, you, like yeah, I was. But trying I to do still anything. have to do it because I've been. Yeah, I've had. But like, especially as an OnlyFans creator, like I had People also, I didn't know, yeah. like I knew you had a boyfriend, but I didn't yeah. know. And like I've had my experience with like having a boyfriend and cheated on and blah blah blah. So I was al already going to be like respectful towards that, but I was hesitant. I was like, okay, it's eleven. Yeah. It's eleven thirty at night. Like he's saying, yeah, come over. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. What's gonna happen? Yeah. So, um, what's your favorite thing about um Texas? All right, who the fuck is doing <laughs> that? Who thinks it's a good fucking idea to get ice during a podcast? Yeah, that's a great Kareem. Sorry, yep. buddy. How did I know? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's my favorite thing about Texas? You get it. I'm gonna Your fucking hear it. Huh? Yeah. I, yeah, it, it can. Actually, it, no, actually it actually did. It echoed on the it. fucking mic. No, I'm <laughs> anyway. Um. Okay. So favorite. <laughs> Fuck you and your twink ass. Yeah. <laughs> get out of here. Get. Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was wet cream. Uh. Um, but where were what were we talking about? Favorite thing about Texas, right? Favorite thing about Texas, I would just say the people. The people, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the people. I like the politics. People here fucking suck at driving. They <laughs> like they after suck. living in SoCal I saw two and oil LA, tankers that crashed on yeah. the side of the road. No, no, no. I, I mean, don't move to Texas if you have like driving anxiety because. Mm. These people are so terrible. Or if you don't yesterday, have insurance. Yesterday, I was driving on, you know, like the main road here. I was going to Lifetime, and this lady, like, completely cut me off, <laughs> slammed on her brakes for no reason. Oh my gosh. I pull up next to her. She rolls down her window. She's like, I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. What? So I roll down my window, and I'm like, I was like, and That's honestly, crazy. I've had a lot of shit happen in my life. I try and stay calm. But I rolled down my window. I was like, yo, just watch where you're going. And she was like, honey, this is Texas. This is how we do it. I was like, no, the... What? What bitch? What? What the fuck? That makes no that makes no sense. No. No. I, I mean, even being in LA for a year, like people suck at driving here. I don't know yeah. about New York, but it's terrible here. So did you get bullied as a kid being a homosexual in Texas? No, because I wasn't out. <laughs> no. I mean people did had people their people speculate. People knew. Is it the blonde hair? No, I I'm actually joking, joking. I, I didn't have I didn't have a dye back <laughs> I then. I had blonde hair too. No, at one okay, point. so I actually did cheer, competitive cheer oh, in wow, eighth grade. That's it. For two people months. And I quit. Speculated. And I quit. I kept it hitting. But people started to find out and I got anxious and I quit. Yeah. Um but every then, guy that's on a cheer team for the most part, ninety nine percent of the yeah. time. Yeah. They're gay. Unless it's college. So Unless it's college, because like nah, those dudes are I mean, but those dudes are like the big they, ones. Uh, they're either gay or they want pussy yeah they want that's yeah, yeah that's the only um, two things but i mean i was a i did cheer i was in cross country yeah i was in student <laughs> council i was in track i was scrawny i dressed like a twink like people could probably assume so that i yeah. was gay but i denied 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 i did not want anybody knowing yeah and i was like you know what fuck you guys i'm going to the marine corps because i'm <laughs> strong and masculine <laughs> All right. Um, so, why did you want to be on my podcast? Because you actually reached out to me. So, what did you want? Okay, not people to, get to learn. Super serious no, here. Let's hear it. But I, hear it. I think the biggest thing is let's growing hear the soft up. Story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is growing up. I was so fucking confused. I was so confused because growing up in Dallas and in a family that didn't have anyone that was gay, the only thing in my head that I knew of was like drag queens and like super feminine gays, things like that. Right. And so, yeah. I knew I liked men at an early age, but I was like, okay, I'm into sports. Like I'm into masculine things. I like camping. I'm into the, you know, fitness, all of this shooting. Yeah. And so I was <laughs> so conflicted. I was like, no, there's no way that I'm gay. 
because I like all these things that are like heterosexual or, or straight yeah. passing, right? Um, and so a big reason I wanted to come on the podcast is like to give an audience and to show younger people like being gay is not masculine, feminine. It's not twink or daddy. You know, like it's it's just like who you yeah. love and your personality is who you are. You can be a feminine person, yeah. straight or gay, you know? Yeah. So that was like, I just wanted to sh give that like audience and community to like younger teens to know that they're, if they're battling that, that they're not alone, yeah. you know? So w what is your opinion on nature and nurture? Do you think being gay is nature or nurture? Could it be a little bit of both? Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah. I think it could be a little bit of both. Um, Cause I don't necessarily think I was raised in a typical household where it would be nurture. Yeah. But I also think certain things. Born again Christian household. Yeah, I down think here certain in things definitely started me on the track of yeah. of being gay. I, but I, you know, I think everyone's a little gay. When did you first know? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. Why? Okay, I feel like <laughs> this is every gay man's story, or I like hear closet a gay man story. Me Straight and this crush. friend. No, no. Yeah. Me and this friend. I think in seventh grade, we're in my house alone and i i'm trying to like remember i mean that was a long time ago yeah but i'm trying to remember exactly what happened but essentially we were sitting on the couch and like i think one of us brought like started watching porn or something and we're not now like both of us are not saying that we're gay or anything we're sitting on opposite ends of the couch and then all of a sudden like i'm 90 percent sure that he like took his dick out wow and then i you know took my dick out and everyone's whipping it one out one thing led to another and we started touching and Mouth started going oh places my God. and yeah, you dirty animal. Yeah. And then from there I was like, okay, that's interesting, but I don't really think I thought anything of it. And then the months later, like eighth grade freshman year. Oh, wow. Oh, I knew, I knew I was going on runs around the neighborhood and secretly going to that same guy's house. I, I was hooking up with that guy for like five years from like eighth grade to senior year. I can't say the same. So what seventh grade, you were probably around. What is that? What, like 11, 12, 11, 12. 12 yeah. 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 Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Um, but I was still in denial the whole time. Nice. Um, so how does it feel to be a sloppy, dirty bottom hoe? I didn't put that question in. <laughs> <laughs> Slop. Wait, sorry. Can you repeat the question? How does it feel to be a sloppy, dirty bottom hoe? Well, I'm not a bottom. Okay. We cl I'm glad we clarified. Um, My producer may have sloppy. Fucked up I'm not questions. sloppy. I'm very. I'm a very passionate done lover. Research, research, and ho. I had my ho phase like years ago. Yeah. I'm like very dialed person, in now. That's something I've noticed. I feel like most gay people have kind of like a ho phase because I think the culture is very ho phasey. You know? Oh yeah, well, and, especially if you're closeted yeah. for so long, and then yeah. you like when you come out or you finally like accept that you're gay. I think every gay man goes through a ho phase. And then we have the Fisher them's that promote <laughs> <laughs> that promote ratchet disgustingness and yeah <sighs> gay culture is yeah. it's nasty it's we unlike any other like i feel like um i feel like we need to change it from the inside that's out. why i was so surprised when i met you and i realized that like you actually like i'm sorry but like you actually were committed to your boyfriend like yeah. i was shocked like to be honest like i even went back to my mom and i told her i was like no like he that he really like is faithful to his boyfriend you know because like that's just not common these days. It's not. It's really hard to find. Like either, even if people say that they're like in a closed relationship, shit still happens. Yeah. But I was like really impressed. And like, it kind of honestly, like not to boost your ego, but like it gave me hope. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, maybe I can actually find someone out there. Yeah. Cause I'm very traditional. I, know like, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I know you struggled with, you know, open. Um, yeah. 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 Open relationship. Yeah. And that's a sore. Is it still ongoing? No, it's not sore. So, no, I, I've like, should we I, bleep this out? No, no, no. I, I can talk about it. <laughs> okay, like, okay. um, so I was with this guy for, I think almost like nine months at this point. Um, we did take like a one month stint break or no, I think we were like seven months. We took a month break, ended up getting back together and kind of like the stipulation was that it was going to be an open relationship. And I love this guy so much. Like, I thought I could sacrifice my, I don't values. want to call them. Yeah. I mean, values. I guess, yeah, values. Yeah. I thought I could sacrifice my values <laughs> and allow him to be in an open relationship. And this came up to like December of this past year. And I just like, it hit me like a fucking brick wall. I yeah. was like, I cannot do this. Yeah. There was just some, like, I don't understand it. I, I, I know that other people are in open relationships and a lot of gay people are. 
I think they're toxic open relationships. But I'm like, like how can you just like yeah. I can't sit at home and just imagine my boyfriend getting railed. Yeah. <laughs> like I, that, I that's, that's not fun for me. I'm not like, oh yeah. man, I'm so glad my boyfriend's just getting his ass penetrated right now. Like, no. Yeah. I, I just I, I couldn't do it. And I thought that I could fake it. And so if you're in that position and you think that like you're gonna sacrifice for your significant other to be in an open relationship, it's not worth it. Yeah. But let me tell you this. I learned so much. I've never been happier in my life. Yeah. Like being so, alone. Question. Uh, how many times have you... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where is this going? How many times have you done something for rank in the military? Never. Never? No. Okay, nope. cool. What about uh, any gay experiences in the military? Like the showers? I know the showers and the bunk beds, they get... Yeah, they do. Freaky. Um, Did you have any? So nothing happened in boot camp. I definitely had my eyes on a few guys, but like in boot camp, especially Marine Corps boot camp, like, and you could probably attest to this. There's not really any room for like you to do anything. Like you're so just focused. And also, people are watching you. Yeah, yeah. You know, in a Um, platoon. Do you guys have platoons? Is that the way it works? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Boot camp was platoons. The first experience I had was in this basic reconnaissance course. We were in. Talega, which is like a very secluded area. Like we were in a bungalow or a Quonset hut. And I don't, maybe you can answer this. I don't know. There's something about like gay men that you can kind of just know. Yeah. Like you just know when something's kind of there. Yep. And this guy like that was in my class, like texted me or something. I don't remember what happened. We got talking about like dicks or something. And I'm not kidding you. Like it's 2 a.m. We just went to bed. We have a ruck run at 4 a.m. We we're supposed to be up in two hours. Damn. But he comes over to my bunk bed. We are in a room full of 60 other men who are training to be like special operations. Yeah. And this guy comes over, wakes me up. He's like, hey. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh hey. Oh my gosh. I'm like, hi. He's like, can I come in? And I was like, oh my um, God. okay. Part of me was really going to say no because I needed that sleep. But also, I was up for it. Like, I wanted to be the main character. Was he good looking? He was all right. Um, and so one thing led to another and he crawled into my, uh, sleeping bag and wow. we had some fun. So you guys, you guys had a tent or what was it? No, no, no. This is in a Quonset hut. Like one of those like tent, uh, like 10 looking seat, like sleeps, like 40 to 60 people, like bunk bed style. Huh. You ever seen one of those? Yeah, like the so old, like we were staying in literally like 60 year old Quonset huts, like the old fashioned, like a big tent. It's like a dome, but it's metal. It's like a metal dome, dome, a curve. And then the ends are like, it's like a, it's like a hot dog bun. Like if you take half of a hot dog bun and set it down. Huh. But anyways, no, there was literally someone sleeping above me and then like 50 other guys around. Wow. And we and just. you didn't get caught? No. You just. Yeah. I can't just, even do yeah. that. Nice. Oh, I'm wow. A phone call. From who? Oh. Anyone important? No, I'm <laughs> Is that. Is no, that? no, no. That's not him. Who? Oh, okay. That's just. Mm. <laughs> Live on okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for that, but whatever. I don't care. Did I ask you why you joined the military? I don't think you did. Why did you join? Oh, the wait, no, no, oh, yeah, I did, you did. I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, and I talked about your MOS, right? Yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, what's something? <laughs> Sorry, I just felt like this. Like... <laughs> what's something you didn't expect when you joined the military? I didn't expect the politics. What about it? Like, I didn't expect that. DC and headquarters Marine Corps and all these things had such an influence on like the very small level, oh, yeah. like infantry battalions and yep. small units. Like I'm yep. not like it pissed me off because we would be getting back from the field, getting prepped to go on a training exercise, doing something, even having like our days off that are not very much. And all of a sudden we get a text and it's like, Hey, we got to do area wide beautification, which is essentially go pick up grass yeah. and shit all, well, all yeah i know what that is and, yeah that's when you pick yeah. up trash and it was for like and i'm sorry but it was for some like one or two star general to come by and and this is my opinion like don't fucking come to my house and tell me to clean it when my toilets don't work when i don't have hot water when my sheets oh, I, are disgusting in the military when my bed is water dis- for two months yeah when my bed is disgusting don't come and tell me that my that you want the parking lot clean of gravel and you want the grass mode when our barracks are dog shit and the food is dog shit. Like don't don't come in. Well, okay. To, I you think know. I think that's getting a little privileged though. Like to be honest, the military is not supposed to be glamorous. No, it's not it supposed to be glamorous. You, especially the Marines. No, no, it's not supposed to be glamorous, but I think there is something to be said. Like there not is a really. lot of tough shit that you do. So when you're not like you're not in the barracks a lot, you know? So like it's my opinion that 
the guy should at least be able to go back to like a working toilet, air conditioning, a shower that works. I feel like that's the reality. I don't don't know. My opinion is a little different on that. I mean, they are changing it, but I mean, it was just the politics of like us cleaning up the area for some one star to come in that doesn't even look around and for him to tell us like how we should police our area. Like either leave us alone or even if it's not the barracks thing, it's like, why are we spending three hours cleaning the gravel when that we could spend three hours doing training or something else? I remember when I was at basic training, we didn't have hot water for like a month or two. And then I remember at one point the heat stopped working for like a week and we had to sleep with layers on in our bunk beds. Like it was the middle of winter too. So it was pretty cold in Georgia. It gets, you know, below freezing. And I remember it was cold, but I kind of like sleeping in the cold anyway. So I was fine with it. Um, what was the hardest thing for you to overcome in the military? Like getting, like maybe getting used to something or. I think the hardest thing. And again, like not to toot my own horn, but I, I, at every different position I was in, in the military, I typically had like a leadership billet. And the biggest thing that I had to overcome was working with guys that were older than me, that I was hot, like in a billet above them. Like it was very, very challenging to work with someone when I'm 20 years old And they're 28 years old and I'm having to tell them what to do. Like that was, that was something I didn't expect that I was going to have to deal with in the Marine Corps, but like, I'm so thankful for it. Um, and like the biggest thing is just getting people to do something that they don't want to do. Yeah. You have to work as a team, as a team. Like that's why I would always go do the things with the guys that I was over or I would at least explain the why. Like, I think that's something with our generation. They want to know the why. Yeah. Like they may not necessarily, why do I have to do that? Yeah. Why? Like, and even if you tell them it's like some dumb shit, like, Hey, we got to mop the floor. Well, why do we have to mop the floor? Well, because then the first sergeant's going to come in. And if the first sergeant's happy with the floor being clean, then we're done. We're off for the day. Yeah. But if the floor isn't clean, then he's going to be pissed off and he's going to make us do it again. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like explaining the the why. We had to clean. Holy crap. Yeah. You learn how to clean in the military. Oh, you do. That is one Hands thing. Hands on your you knees, Angelina yeah, Jolie. You are with a toothbrush sometimes cleaning that. No, actually. Bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. We call them scush brushes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Funny story. So when I was in the military, there was this guy named Ferris. I remember like the first few weeks he would, for some reason, he didn't want to take a shower in the shower. So what he would do is he was he a grower? I guess. Yeah, he was was big. He He was big. Anyway, maybe he was big, but had a small ween. He would fucking get naked and then go take a shower by the sink. Like instead of going into the shower. He would shower with the sink water. Yeah, but, But then proceed to call everyone else like a fag. But like he's the one that's listen people that call other people fags are typically fags yeah. themselves yeah um but i learned a lot uh, anyway it, there was a, a few other stories there's this one another guy that would uh figueroa funny guy he'll probably <laughs> he's probably gonna be watching yeah. this um i'm friends with him uh he he would helicopter his fucking dick oh he was one of those guys yeah there he was loved always the show. jokers the, the dudes the with like the giant dicks it really fun. wanted to I, show there was a lot of moments that like it is fun yeah I recommend it. I I recommend if you're struggling mentally and you have nothing else, if you, it, it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely (laughs) a test. It's, it's definitely a test for your mental strength and it, yeah, but you you also leave, but you also leave with issues too. I think it can fix some, but it also, you might leave with some back issues, but like me or your hip flexor, my hip flexor, hip flexor. No, I mean, I think I definitely got like confidence. I got like self-worth out of it. But then there's other things where, like, I get overstimulated easy, and I like things now in like a very structured yeah, order. And when I'm they're not structured. in an order, I like lose yeah. my shit. People don't know? understand that about me. Like, a lot of people don't understand that to an extent. I need like structure insert for weird things. For weird. Yeah. Why are you looking at me, <laughs> bitch? I'm gonna come behind the fucking. He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> I do like structure. Yeah. I don't like going out every night. I mean, but to be fair, that is this kind producer, of your job. I think I might need to get rid of him. I'm joking. I can't. I love him. Me, 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 me. You I should mean, be re- you should be casted on the next Avatar movie. Really? Yeah. Why? Because that that little voice that you did there, or that 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 pitch, Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um. Let's see what else. No, no, no. Boobs. Let's see. Do you like boobs? Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think they're good for laying down on. Oh, have I've never you ever done anything with the woman. Oh. Or are you one of those? Oh, what's the I... word? Country club gay, gay? Is that the word? Gold star. Are you a gold no, star gay? I'm Thank not. You. I actually, I need someone to sit there for now on because I need two brains to think, especially yeah. when I've already done one podcast yeah. prior. 
and I'm, you know, drinking whiskey. I, I think I need like a Google, Tennessee whiskey. You know, that's kind my of like song. a like a Hey Siri, but it's like Hey Kareem. <laughs> like, do you know the answer to this? <laughs> phone a friend. <laughs> phone, a p- <laughs> phone a pilot. Um, phone a pilot. The net I need before he goes. Uh, Sir, you cannot go on the plane. <laughs> this is so You look bad. too young to board. <laughs> I love you. Uh, it's okay. I'm what sorry. were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about women. Have you ever? Oh yeah, I did. I yeah. was in a barracks room with one of my best friends, uh, and we had two girls over. Oh. And he was, you know, you were still trying to be straight. Well, no, I was already, I was already fully convinced I was gay, but it was one of those things where I was like, you know what, fuck it, like, yeah, let's try. I it. still think about that. I'm and like, I'm like, fuck. I wish I could did be not straight. work. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it did not work. I'm not joking. Ah. Huh? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that I did get, I did get aroused initially. Same. But. Kind of. A minute in, I was like, mm-mm. mm-mm. Blue balls. I don't like it. Shit sucks. I don't like it. And it went, yeah. it just. It, I have and, a funny story, but I don't even know if I want to share it And it, it was so here. embarrassing. Like, it's, you know, it's already embarrassing when, like, a normal, like, a straight guy cannot perform. Yeah. Like, it's already embarrassing. But I didn't have an excuse, like, oh, I'm tired or I've been drinking. I was dead sober. Yeah. And I felt so bad. I mean, I shouldn't have felt bad, but I felt so bad. I, I also got because she going. was really hot. Yeah, she was really hot. Oh shit! And so, yeah, I just, I actually had like one drink, <laughs> and I started pretending like I was super hammered by the end of oh it. Oh my god! I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just like I can't. I can't. Function. Yeah, I'm that was so drunk. that was my excuse. Yeah. I see that too. Um, how does your family feel about you? Well, how do they feel about you going to the military? And also, no, actually, fuck that question. Pause. How do they f- pause? How do they uh, feel about you coming out? And when did you come out? So I came out in October of 2021. I think that was actually coming out month. I think I came out in coming out month in 2021. Oh, wow. That's that's a little um, cringy. Not going to lie. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it just happened to work out like yeah. that. Like, I had no idea. I'm still, like, completely uncultured, probably, in the gay community. But anyways, um... They all took it really well. Like my my dad kind of said he knew, although I don't know if he knew, yeah. but he said he knew. He probably knew. Um and parents know the best. Yeah. For my, anyone out there, my family took it really well. Unfortunately, though, not to spill my family drama, but it kind of got leaked internally. Like I didn't get to personally tell everyone. Yeah. Which I'm a little upset about, but it's understandable. Like I'm yeah. not gonna hold grudges. Um, I feel like it's like I feel like we make such a big deal over it and it's not even that big of a deal. You yeah. Know? I mean, my dad even said like, I don't feel like you should have to come out. Um, yeah. and I didn't like, I didn't want to, the reason I came out and I don't want to start family drama, but essentially I went to a gay club for the first time and I got hammered and I posted a video of me in that gay club on my Snapchat story. And so the next morning, a few people in my family had seen it and I took it down and I thought that they would keep it a secret and they didn't. Yeah. Um, that's how I guess, and that's it's a fine. Good, like, I'm not, I'm not holding come gr- out, yeah, and I'm not holding grudges, but also, like, like I didn't have to, fi- oh. yeah, but I'm <laughs> thankful, like, because I probably wouldn't have come out when I did had that, yeah. had that not happened. Um, and then it was actually really embarrassing because I took my mom to Hibachi, and this was like three months after I came out, but I still hadn't told her. And she just straight up asked me, She's like, Does it bother you? And I'm like, What are you talking about? She's like, Does it bother you when people ask you if you have a girlfriend? I was like, what do you mean? That's, like, oh, I was like, so what are good. you? She's I was like, so yeah, I was like, what are you getting at? That's such a good question. And she was like, she, bro, she knew. She was like, <laughs> she was like, I know. And I'm like, no, what? And she's like, she gave me the look like, I know. And I was I like, know. I was like, You're a flaming oh, fucking that I'm homosexual. gay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was scared. Like, she's a very like religious yeah. practices, you know. Um, but no, she's been nothing but loving. So everyone really took it well, even yeah. in the Marine Corps. But I think the only difference is, one, I'm not feminine. Like, I still think there's a stigma towards, like, feminine gays. And yeah. I also waited until, like, years in where people already knew me. They already knew my work ethic. Um, and then pick I told me, them. Pick me. Pick me. No, I'm yeah, joking. I'm yeah. a pick me gay, too. Like, they, they, like, <laughs> they didn't judge me <laughs> not you. based I was, off I was flipping off the camera, not you. So don't give me the eyes. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't see it's that so well. Sad. Um, so your mom's religious. Are you, are you religious at all? Yes and no. Yeah? Why? Have you struggled with, with that? I mean, yeah, I have. I grew up pretty religious. Um, probably around 10th or 11th grade, I started, started questioning things because... <sighs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was like a big time where people were like, that's when the churches were really resenting the gays and, you know, everything like that. Um, I definitely believe out like I, I, I believe in Christianity, um, but it's like it's kind of like a back and forth thing. Like sometimes yeah. I believe and then I see other stories of like people going through really shitty things or um, and I do think that the church gets misrepresent. Oh, 100%, mis- it's represented. A man touches it and they that. corrupt it. Yeah, yeah. Like there are some people who like you'll see videos on TikTok of like some pastor who's like, we condemn all gays, go to burn in hell. Like, yeah. And then obviously that makes me feel like, well, I don't want to be a part of that. Like if you're condemning yeah. me, but like you still most, have the sin, you still have sin. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, something that I've struggled with is at the end of the day, I don't think being gay is a natural. I think it's natural to an extent. And I think it is kind of nature versus nurture, but also it is kind of against, you know, human, like, I guess, the, I guess mother nature or humankind because, you know, at You're the end of the day, like we're, we're made, reproduction. Yeah we're, yeah, we're made to reproduce. And I know the thing that makes me feel better is the fact that, you know, I guess I can adopt and give a child a better life in that sense, but I also do want to have my own sure. kids. But there is the argument. I saw something very, like, that changed my perspective on that is what about heterosexual people that participate in oral sex or anal sex? Yeah. And wait and, and use a condom. Like, is our function not to reproduce? Yeah. So like that that begs my question of like, yes, we're here to reproduce I think humans as are a male beings to an yeah. extent. Yeah. But like, don't condemn me for for being gay and having gay sex when you participate in oral sex and, and use a condom and premarital and anal sex like abortion. Yeah. So oh, shit, fuck off. Fuck. I, I gotta <laughs> stop drinking whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. How do you feel about the second amendment and gun laws? Um, I, I'm definitely like, I'm supportive. Yeah. Um, Are you carrying right now? No, no, no. Would you leave it in the car? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously I'm biased because of the military. Like part of me carrying is a comfortability thing. Yeah. Same. Um, and look, criminals are going to have weapons no matter what. And there's no, like, it, this is my opinion and it's very controversial, but like the more people that do carry, I personally believe that there are more sane people in this world than insane people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the more people that carry are able to defend their families. Like for me, I already have my oath. Like if you try and steal my car, it's up for grabs, whether I'm going to try and use like deadly force or not. Yeah. Really the only main reason I carry is to protect myself yeah. and my family. Well, for me, it's more so because I have stalkers and yeah, I yeah. get crazy texts. I've had people come to my house. I've yeah. had my house swatted. Like, yeah. I'm keeping a fucking gun on my Like, I'm not times. carrying a gun if you try and, like, if I see you robbing a bank or something. I'm like, a, I, I mean, not, I'm not going to shoot at someone robbing a bank. No. But if you're hurting someone, yeah. like, I'm going to wait. Even, like, I'm going to wait till you run away and I'm going to shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Like, um, don't you fucking hurt, especially children, anything. Yeah, children. Yeah. Um, But I just, I mean, there, there's no way for us to know that someone's going to flip switches. You know, yeah. like. Maybe there could be a different yeah, process. Today, today it was so crazy. I was walking at a Best Buy and some fucking some fucking freak, some guy, he's walking in and he like I'm just passing by. Like I just like looked at him briefly, like not even staring. He goes, What are you looking at? Faggot. Like what the fuck? Like yeah. I didn't even look at the guy. Like yeah. this guy was crazy. Cl- and I I I was clenching my gun at the time. I was like, this guy is like fucking yeah. crazy. Now I I'm, will I'm say I'm a paranoid fuck. I'm paranoid for a reason because I don't want to be the victim of crime. Fuck that. Yeah. Like I will say I think some of the classes, unless you've been in the military or law enforcement, I do think for civilians that there needs to be a oh, little bit longer of a course to go yeah. through. I've seen some fucking Because people idiots. are either one, like, for instance, like know your target and what lies beyond that. Some people don't really understand no, that. Or even the ammo that you're using. Yeah. Too, or some ammo you I mean, the ammo that I buy, you know, it's so it stops and you Yeah. I don't um, want to shoot anyone behind. The but target. I think like it is important to go through like longer courses to know like, hey, don't pull your weapon when you're maybe, you know, in a crowded place or, you know, like if you're going to pull it, you need to you need to know like you're going to sh- you're going to fire because if you pull it and then they take it away from you. Now you put other people in jeopardy. Yeah. So like I do think for civilians, the courses could be a little bit longer, um, but I think everybody should be able to carry like. Yeah. I completely to agree. an extent, like I obviously, if you're a felon or whatnot, like also if you just can't handle a gun, please don't carry. Yeah, yeah. Please don't. At that point, yeah. But There's enough again, people that again, can. It's up to you. 
Um, did you ever come out to anyone in the military or no? Yeah, I did. I mean, I didn't like, I didn't make a, you know, an announcement speech or like go around like, hey, what's up? I'm gay. Did you know? Um, but I'm, I told I'm like, Gaden. Nice I'm Gaden. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Um, nice ring to it. Maybe but I kind of just, that. yeah, I yeah. would like that. Right, just Gaiden. kidding. I don't want to, I don't Continue, like that. Continue, Gaiden. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of like slowly trickled. Some people already knew, but like the guys that I worked with directly, like I did finally <laughs> tell. Um, and honestly, like it actually went really well. I was yeah. terrified. Like I had so much anxiety about it. Um, but I had people even to like the extent of coming up to me and they were like, Hey, if anybody ever messes with you, like, let me know. Like, we'll beat their ass. Yeah. You know, like that. And I was super surprised. Um, but again, that I think was partly to do or partly due to the fact that they knew me already. Um, and so I, I guess like a big thing that I want to change is like, listen, if some dude comes out to you that they're gay, like a weekend and you knowing them still treat them no differently yeah. than like anyone else. Yeah. Kind of put it to the yeah. side. Let them prove it's themselves. Just, if they're yeah. gay and they're a piece of shit, then treat them like a piece of shit. Yeah. But if they're gay and they can hold their own, like leave them be, you know. Yeah, agreed. Uh, what's uh, just a few more questions? What's your what's one life lesson that you would like to share with everyone, with the viewers? Oh God, I think the biggest thing is just loving yourself. Like it took me so long. I'm 24. To an extent. To an extent. Um, so. but this past month, like, has really shown me, like, I've done a lot of things, kind of like alone and for myself. And when you learn to love yourself and accept yourself and you just be who you are, you have so much more fun. And like power, I'm so content. You're a lot stronger yeah. than like I can I can now tell people no. Like I post things that I probably wouldn't normally post because I would think like, oh, you know, someone's gonna think this is cringy. But like I am fully confident in myself. I'm not cocky, but I'm confident in myself Maybe and I little, love myself. But it's okay. Only only a little. Only a little. Only a little. Um just just a little. But yeah, I would just say like the only bad side of that is for me, it took like a lot of pain and trauma to get there. So, but I also don't think you can Shit. get to that point until you've gone through like a lot of shitty things in your yeah. life. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, one, what's your type? What's my type? Actually, I feel like I know your type. The gym bro. The classic. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go the ahead. classic gym bro. Probably around 20 years old. Something around there. Okay. You kind of, I do, I, I do think I like younger guys. Um, but this is what I realized from my last relationship. I definitely, yeah, it's going to need to be a gym guy. Cause like that is a huge part of my yeah. life, like at least two hours a day. So like if they either a aren't comfortable with me being gone that long, which anyone should be, but like, I would like for like my boyfriend to go work out with me. Like yeah. that would be sick. So um, yeah. And then can you pick a country and a state for me to travel to the Philippines, Philippines? Yeah. Why? So when we were going on our cruise from, not cruise, I mean deployment, but we call it a cruise, um, from California to Somalia, we passed through the Straits of Philippines, I think, Straits of Singapore, Singapore Strait. Anyways, we passed by the Phil Singapore. Is that right? Is Philippines in the Singapore or is Singapore in the Philippines? Uh, those are two separate countries. <laughs> what's the one? What's the one that's like really, really nice? Singapore. Singapore, yeah, the Philippines. Oh, Straits, is, is, the Philippine Straits. Different. No, I think it's the Philippine Straits, but it's Singapore that's right there. Okay. But anyways, we were going through that passageway, and due to COVID, like we weren't able to stop and like go look around. But I got in like the binoculars and whatnot, and it was looking around, and it would look like the most beautiful place. Yeah, and Singapore everyone that I, nice. everyone really that nice. I talked to has been like, you need to go there. Like it's just gorgeous. Yeah, but from I wanna, afar, I go there one day. it was beautiful. I would go there. And state, state. Yeah, what state? Montana. Montana. Yeah. I've already been there, but we're going to have to go again. Yeah. We're going to Montana. Did you go to... Uh, uh, no, I would say Montana. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, least favorite thing about the gay community. Did, I, did we talk about that? I don't think so. No. I mean, we might have mentioned it, but... Oh, okay. Well, do you want to talk about that? Least yeah. favorite thing? I mean, least favorite thing would be hookup culture. So open relationships. Open relationships. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um... And okay, da, 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 da. okay. Last Fuck question. Fuck your chicken strips. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this chicken shit gig. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who is struggling to come out to their friends and family in a similar position to yours? I think once you accept who you are, and uh, you accept that you alone are really going to be your sole person to love you're yourself. A fucking pig. <laughs> Um, way to ruin it. You really ruined the moment. Sorry. Just kidding. As um, As I would were. just say like when you're ready, 
Yeah. Honestly, like when you accept yourself and you know that like you have to have your own back, like you have to be prepared going into the situation that you will lose everyone. Like, obviously you don't want that to happen, but I think you have to go into that situation and look at it and say like, Hey, I'm going to come out cause I want to be who I want to be and I want to be free. And if nobody accepts it, then so be it. Like yeah. I'll find people in my life that do. I like that. Anything I have to else? Pee we so fucking you bad. have to pee. Yeah, but yeah. I can hold it. You can go to the bathroom. It's kind of like a trend now. We do like mid podcast bathroom breaks. No. We did it with our friend George. I'm gonna. Um, I'm kind of like testing myself. Shall we say friend? I guess we could. Yeah. I mean. Our, oh uh, yeah. When we'll you say. went to in the bathroom. Wee woo. Wee woo. Wee woo. Whoop whoop. That's what sounded. You know that song. Speculation. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Th- thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a really far drive. It's a far five second drive <laughs> yeah. over from your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks Peace again. Uh, thank you. guys. No, don't end it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment and subscribe for more. And peace. See ya. Love you.